This tutorial is all about moles. Remember that a mole is just a very large number of particles. One mole of atoms of any element contains the same number of atoms. So the concept of moles is useful when we're trying to calculate how much of a product we're likely to get when we're using a certain mass of a reactant. First we're going to return to where we get the masses of atoms from something called the relative atomic mass, which isn't always exactly the same number as the mass number. We often use the periodic tables such as this one to work out the number of subatomic particles in a particular element, for example boron here. If we look at boron, its proton number, this is the bottom number here, is 5. That tells us the number of protons. If we want to know the number of electrons in boron, then it's uh, exactly 5 because the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. But we often confuse this top number here with the mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons, and use it to work out that, for example, boron has got 6 neutrons. However, we must remember that this number isn't the mass number, it's actually the relative atomic mass. And the relative atomic mass is the average mass of an atom of an element. Hence, a couple of uh, elements have got odd relative atomic masses, which aren't whole numbers, because they're merely an average of the mass of each of the atoms of the element. For example, chlorine has some atoms weighing 35 and others weighing 37. So in summary, the mass of an atom is its mass number, but some elements having isotopes, that's atoms of the same element but with different mass numbers, um, in these cases we have to use an average mass of the atom which is called the relative atomic mass and that's on the periodic table it's the larger of the two numbers the one at the top just look at the key on the periodic table and it's this one that we use to work out the mass of atoms and therefore the mass of a mole of atoms relative atomic mass yeah but relative to what well, relative to a kind of gold standard atom which we take as being our unit now that one is carbon, but not just any old carbon atom, a particular isotope of carbon that weighs 12 atomic mass units. So of course one atomic mass unit is one twelfth of the mass of one atom of carbon 12. And the relative atomic mass of any other element is the average mass of all the atoms of that element compared to this one twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. Now that's all very well, but we can't weigh individual atoms, they're too small. In fact, they're very, very tiny. And so we have to weigh large numbers of atoms. So we choose a particular number of atoms, which for carbon would weigh not 12 atomic mass units, but 12 grams. And this number is a very large number, 6 times 10 to the power of 23, or 600,000 million 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 atoms. We call this number one mole of atoms. So one mole of carbon atoms weighs 12 grams. Of course different moles of atoms weigh different amounts. Take an example of the element hydrogen. Hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1. The mass of one mole of its atoms therefore, that large number, is 1 gram. Of course that contains 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Take another example, let's say magnesium. Magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24. The mass of one mole of magnesium atoms therefore would be 24 grams, but it would still contain 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms. A third example might be sulphur. An atom of sulphur weighs 32, so one mole of sulphur atoms would be 32, but in grams and again contains the some, same number of atoms, 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Now after a while this number, 6 times 10 to the 23, becomes unimportant. We just call it one mole of atoms. Now you'd never get uh, an exam question quite as easy as this one, but what's the mass of one mole of magnesium atoms? Well here's magnesium. Magnesium's got a relative atomic mass of 24, so that's 24 but in grams. Sulfur 32, so that's 32 grams. Aluminium, 27, so that's 27 grams. Easy peasy. A touch harder, 
What's the mass of two moles of uh, hydrogen atoms? Well, if one mole of hydrogen atoms is one gram, then it's two times one gram, which is two grams. For chlorine atoms, a mole of chlorine would weigh 35.5 grams, so two times 35.5 grams is 71 grams. And two moles of uh, nitrogen atoms, well, one mole of nitrogen atoms would be 14 grams, so two times 14 grams would be 28 grams. The mass of one mole of a substance is called its molar mass, and you can sense some calculations coming on. Uh, we might be asked to work out the number of moles if we're given the molar mass and the mass of a substance, or to rearrange that equation in various ways uh, in the form of a sort of a triangle, like you might have used in physics. That written equation then is this one here, that the number of moles equals the mass over the molar mass. Now you can rearrange that in various ways. You can say that the mass is the number of moles times the molar mass, or you might say that the molar mass equals the mass over the number of moles. And you can rearrange it using this kind of equation here, where you've got mass over number of moles and molar mass. So learn that triangular equation, or if you struggle with those, just learn one of these two equations on this page. So I've put that little triangle up in the top corner, and in the first question we want to know the mass. So the mass equals the number of moles times the molar mass. So in this question about aluminium, uh, the number of moles is 8 and the molar mass is 27, but in grams. And the answer to that one then is 8 times 27, which is 216 grams. In the second question, it's the number of moles we need. So the number of moles is going to be the mass over the molar mass. So here, number of moles equals the mass divided by the molar mass, which in this case the mass is 0 0.48 grams and the molar mass for oxygen, well oxygen is 16 so that's 16 grams so 0 0.48 over 16 on the old calculator 0 0.03 what? Well it's moles. Moles of compounds are really no more difficult, you just need to work out the relative formula mass rather than the relative atomic mass. So for two moles of magnesium oxide, first of all, what does one mole of magnesium oxide weigh? Well, one mole of magnesium oxide contains one magnesium, which is 24, and one oxygen, which is 16, comes to 40, but of course that's in grams, that's 40 grams. So therefore two moles, well, the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass which is 2 times 40 grams which is 80 grams. In the second question how many moles of molecules are there in 90 grams of water? Well one mole of water that's got two lots of uh, one for the hydrogen plus one lot of the 16, which is a total of 18, but of course in moles that's going to be 18 grams. Um, now here we want to know the number of moles, so the number of moles equals the mass over the molar mass. Okay, so the mass is 90 grams over 18 grams is 5 moles. Although at foundation level you can work out the uh, reacting amounts by just using simple ratio, at high level you're expected to use moles to do those kind of calculations. Here's a past paper question. Sodium peroxide reacts with water to make oxygen. Look at the equation for this reaction. Two molecules of sodium peroxide react to make one molecule of oxygen. So the number of moles of oxygen is always going to be half the number of moles of sodium peroxide. Well, Chloe finds that 7.8 grams of sodium peroxide make 1.6 grams of oxygen. This is no great surprise, because if you look on the right-hand side, uh, one mole of sodium peroxide would weigh 78 grams. So she's actually got 0.1 of a mole of that. And 
one mole of oxygen would weigh 32 grams and with 1.6 she's actually got 0.05 moles which is exactly a half the amount. So if she's got 1.95 grams of sodium peroxide rather than having 0.1 of a mole she'd actually have a quarter of that which is 0.025 moles so she'd expect to get half of that half of 0 0.025 0 0.0125 moles of oxygen which would weigh uh, I think 0.4 grams actually it's a much easier way of doing this question what we're looking at is ratio here she's gone down from 7.8 to 1.95 and actually although that doesn't appear to be uh, a very easy comparison if we do that calculation on a calculator we actually find out the answer is 4 so she's gone down to a quarter of the amount. So all she needs to do is get a quarter of the amount of 1.6 grams of oxygen. So when we take a quarter of 1.6 grams of oxygen, we get 0.4 grams of oxygen. So two alternate methods, but you just got to judge which is the best way. Here, because we saw the relationship between the numbers, easier to use proportion. In this second question, uh, the relative atomic mass of sodium is 23, so the relative atomic mass is the average mass of a sodium atom compared to 1 12th the mass of which atom? Well, it's carbon-12. Here's the answer. As you can see from the mark scheme, they just wanted some sort of evidence that you'd worked out that 1.95 was a quarter of 7.8, so you'd then quarter of 1.6 to get the correct answer for the second mark, and carbon-12 is that gold standard again. Here's another question that could be done by proportion, but I'm going to do it by moles. In this one, copper carbonate decomposes to copper oxide and carbon dioxide when it's made. So one formula of copper carbonate gives one formula of copper oxide and one formula of uh, carbon dioxide. So one mole gives one mole and one mole. Now Jack heats 6.2 grams of copper carbonate, but that's not one mole. So you need to calculate the mass of copper oxide that he should make. Uh, so what I've done is the number of moles of copper carbonate um, number of moles is the mass over the molar mass so here he's using 6.2 grams over the mass of one mole and these should be in grams of course uh, which is 124 which is 0 0.05 moles if he'd used one mole he'd got one mole of copper oxide but he's only used 0.05 moles so he's only expected to get 0.05 moles of copper oxide now what would that weigh the mass is the number of moles times the molar mass, so it's that 0 0.05 number of moles times the mass of one mole, which in the table is 80. So that's 0 0.05 times 80, which is 4 grams. And here's your answer, and of course in the answer they're kind of assuming that maybe you might use proportion. 124 grams making 80 grams, so scaling down to half, 62 grams would give 40, and then scaling down to uh, 6.2 grams would make 4 grams. So this scaling method is absolutely fine, so long as the numbers in the question are straightforward, I'd recommend you, that you do that.